Are you ready for the evolution? Hold on tight to your seats because I'm gonna have a really, really deep down the rabbit hole discussion talk with Knut Zauberholm and Jeff Booth, both of them, you know, super well-known authors, brilliant minds. Um, if you haven't read Jeff Booth's book, The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future, you should now by now and give it, share it with your friends and family. And of course, Knut Zauberholm, not only, you know, a beautiful author of uh, a couple of books and so many brilliant mind-blowing articles uh, his two books are bitcoin sovereignty through mathematics and bitcoin independence reimagined so we're going to talk about a lot of things uh, technological evolution deflation abundance uh, exponential uh, technological innovation going to talk about you know human civilizational advancement consciousness so hold on tight to your seats if you have any questions suggestions let me know my email address is kd at kvandavani.com make sure you follow me you follow jeff booth and kurt Swalham on twitter i'm going to put everything on the show notes and without further ado this is my talk with jeff booth and kurt Swalham. hope you can enjoy this enjoy all right well welcome to the show Knut Svalholm and Jeff Booth. Guys, thank you so much for coming. I really was looking forward, been looking forward to this talk uh, for a long time. Um, so you guys don't need any introduction. Um, Knut, I mean, you both and, and Jeff, you're both, uh, you know, brilliant authors and really in the name of all Bitcoiners and humanity, I want to thank you for, you know, committing and dedicating your time and your mm -hmm. you know, sharing your knowledge and your comprehension. Because uh, I think we're going to look back hopefully one day and, uh, you know, and really be uh, us or our children. We're going to be proud of what we've been doing uh, in this transformational, really essential phase. So, um, yeah, um, what do we start off? Uh, I want to start off, uh, Jeff, uh, with this and Knut with this uh Energy FUD uh, by Elon <laughs> Musk. I know. I, I just, you know, I just want to spend some time on it because um, can I just first establish a fact? I mean, would you agree that? Um, I mean, you know, I do admire. Uh, I do admire Elon Musk for his, uh, you know, creativity, creative mind, innovative entrepreneurship. He's really, you know, contributed a lot to the development of technology. But the thing is, I mean, when someone is in a position uh, and dependent on governmental subsidies including military contracts and is well at you know at the top of the you know fiat cantilinears if i may call that i mean doesn't it somehow uh, force you you know to to ignore the facts and uh, and not be open to rational logical argument argumentation like you know both of you do on twitter and elsewhere you ask you know very logical rational questions you know, which would you choose, you know, uh, monetary inflation, uh, just to paraphrase it, or or the other route, you know, like uh, a sound, hard, scarce as money and uh, uh, with a free market. Uh, and so, yeah, let's just kick it off. Um, I think you I think you uh, said or intimated that well, uh, the uh, you follow the incentives, follow the behavior. Um, and 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 I was thinking about it last night because I, I I posted that that comment on how is it possible to grow forever uh, on a finite planet and think that's energy conservation or 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 good for the environment? It's 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 illogical. Um, and and that was shared kind of over four thousand times, and it's had uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand people. Um, uh, look at it or interact with it on, on on Twitter, but that's not the 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 compelling part. The compelling part is about a thousand people, or maybe more, um, actually believe that that's a good thing for the planet. Um, and it's really hard to it's it's really hard to put, uh, grasp that because it's pretty it's it's illogical. You cannot grow forever on a finite planet. Um, and if you're going to debase your currency to pretend you can, it kind of re re wreaks havoc everywhere. So, uh, so now getting to Elon Musk, when your entire business is, uh, or, or if you, and by the way, I'm a first first statement. He's still in Bitcoin. 
He's still uh, uh, he, uh, he's st- still there, and I think he's a net positive for the whole system. But if if you imagine how many uh, how many people would come a- after him on the whole ESG thing, and how the government is probably coming after him on the whole ESG thing, um, that's that's probably what made that t- tip. And he he did point to as it moves as it transitions more to renewables and everything else in uh, in his statement he's uh, he's looking at it um but but again you watch where the incentives come from he's trying to he's he's trying to uh he, he's trying to get money from the incentive structure the esg st- structure and all of the money that's being printed to support esg and i bet you in his organization a whole bunch of people are you have to walk your you have to walk your bitcoin back until until people understand that it's uh, that that it's a net positive for society rather than a negative. That's that's my now that what I just said has a lot of consequences for uh, for Bitcoin too, because right now with so much confusion, if if so many people misunderstand it, then then it's more susceptible for for from a hack from another another digital currency that can be controlled right or government digital currency that can be controlled and so where the where the big it i try to think about um and you you guys know this but i am not in this for money fame i don't need any of that <laughs> i'm in this because i truly believe that bitcoin is um is might be the only path to a uh, to uh, to actually humanity surviving as a species. I actually uh, it, it might be that it's that strong because every other uh, digital currency um, it would be it, it wouldn't be allowed to break out this fast, right? So Bitcoin's already so large and distributed and everything else, and it has a network effect on it. You would have to really to stop that, or to you could stop others, right? You could through regulation, control of <laughs> on ramps, you could stop others. But Bitcoin's hard to hard to stop. So if 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 I were thinking the opposite course, what would I do to try to stop it? I might create my own um, ransomware attack on a on a pipeline, right? I, if I was if I was thinking counterintelligence, I might do that to say we have to stop it. I might create a whole bunch of FUD around energy reliance to say we have to stop it. Thinking, thinking, okay, if we can slow it down and we can create something else that, that, that solves some of these, maybe we can catch up. Knut, yeah, let me, let me hear your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I'm unmuted now. Uh, I think Elon is uh, slowly but surely turning into John McAfee <laughs> because like some of what he says uh, uh, makes a lot of sense, but then the, he's trolling in between with all this doggy coin stuff uh, and uh, uh, people don't know to, what to make of this last tweet. Uh, I think it's probably just as Jeff said, uh, a political move rather than anything else, because even even with the fiat mindset, there's so much, uh, so many errors in the argumentation. Like, for instance, it doesn't, it doesn't change. Uh, the energy usage of Bitcoin does not change because of more or less transactions. That has nothing to do with the energy use. So, so not selling or not selling Teslas for Bitcoin wouldn't, wouldn't change the energy use at all. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think it's a quite a cheap political move for him since he wouldn't be selling very many Teslas for Bitcoin anyway, because if you have, uh, if you have enough Bitcoin to buy a Tesla, that probably means you're a hodler and uh, you've already figured out the, the, how, uh, how excellent Bitcoin is at, at everything. So you'd rather keep the Bitcoin than buy a Tesla with them. Uh, so I, I don't think he was selling any bit, any Teslas for Bitcoin, or at least not very many of them. Uh, so uh, so so that's the first thing. But then uh, then again, uh, the, I believe that there's 
nothing on earth uh, uses energy as efficiently and as honestly as as bitcoin mining does because like it's it, it's a it's a business with a very small profit margin so it's like selling a dollar for uh, like it's like buying a dollar for 99 cents buying buying a bitcoin for almost a, a whole bitcoin because they have to they have to spend that much money on the energy in order to acquire the bitcoin and uh, receive the the winning block uh, every 10 minutes so um, and it's already it's already using excess energy uh, and not like energy that would have been wasted and thrown away uh, in, in that sense i've written a lot about this how it functions as, as a mathematical battery you can convert ele electrical energy into monetary energy which is like the first time uh, that physics uh, is connected to uh, praxeology if you will like the uh, the objective world is connected to the subjective or intersubjective world of of uh, of human action and uh, it's a really fascinating thing because it's uh, we've never seen a thing like this before. And uh, whether uh, Elon understands it or not is up for debate. But uh, I think he, in the long run, he's, he's just noise and, and nothing else, little else. There's a parenthesis in the, in the history of, of Bitcoin to come. Yeah, I agree with you. And you know, it's noise, distraction, and, and to be honest with you, I mean, I don't think Elon Musk is stupid. <laughs> He's mm. highly intelligent, highly creative in his, you know, in his thinking. So I don't think yeah. it's 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 not the lack of you know argument or facts of no. you know understanding the facts of the reality. And you know, Alex Epstein or Epstein, whatever, you, how do you pronounce? He challenged him actually to a discussion. He's one of the really renowned experts on you know energy and efficiency, and he said something like you know uh, something you know uh, sort of as as a as a reply to to. Uh, Elon Musk's uh, postulations. He said, "What does 1,330 terawatt hours in batteries cost at current mega pack prices?" Quoted by Elon Musk yeah. himself, "That's $300 per kilowatt hour. That's about $400 trillion." To put this into perspective, global GDP is a pro approximately $87 trillion. You know. Yeah, and the thing is, he's a brilliant engineer, obviously, but he's also obviously an even more brilliant marketeer. Uh, because he markets his products uh, e even better than they function. Like the, the whole thing wouldn't work without government subsidies uh, to begin with. Like, and uh, if you if you count everything, including how how hard it is for for uh, to, to for people to to start producing nuclear energy, for instance, it's it's forbidden in very many places. And furthermore, a kilowatt hour. Uh, a kilowatt hour in one place is not the same as a kilowatt hour uh, at, at another place. Uh, like, you, you need access to them. <laughs> like, they need to be close to the energy source in order to be used. Batteries are not uh, normal batteries, or the batteries that Elon produces are, are not as good as storing energy as people think. Uh, there's a lot of waste in, in uh, electricity when transporting it and when storing it. And, and Bitcoin functions as a... Um, as a hedge for that, or like a, a mathematical battery, as I said, you can use the excess energy uh, in order to create a specific part of a, a finite number, 21 million, and you get a piece of the digital pie and that's forever. So uh, it incentivizes uh, green solutions more than anything else. And th this is all without mentioning how much better a sound money standard would be. <laughs> and how uh, how uh, how sound money works, and how um, uh, sorry Jeff, but uh, uh, how a world where consumerism is dis disincentivized is the only thing that can save us, as, as Jeff said before, because I truly believe that as well. But from a fiat standpoint, this this is my explanation of how how it's uh, environmentally friendly. And so just to build on what Knut said, we are in a transformation to the digital age. And the digital age is made up of information. It, every, it, just about everything is energy and information, right? We're in information. And that transition from, it's to make it easier for people to understand, we used to, I think about the cassette tapes or CDs that I used to buy to listen to music. 
tons of a CD library. Those were things which were really information. And they had an entire distribution channel of people who could pick the musicians because of the high cost of distribution. Um, they had to pick the winners. And so we only saw very few of the musicians. Um, and then we went to a record store and we bought CDs or something like that. And we drove to all of the energy, everything else to do that. And now we, now we have unlimited music for $10 a month. Where is the GDP gain in the unlimited music? Where, where is the GDP gain for all of the artists who also created that music for us that would have never been found and everything else? There's a tiny bit for their wealth that was created out of it. But, uh, but, but net of those two systems, the technology created a GDP decrease. That's what, that's, that's as, as things moved to information and product and productivity moving into information is lower cost. It's, it, it should bring prices down. So in that abundance, we, right now, if you use that idea just in CDs, every, oh, great CDs. And then they don't know, people don't notice it on their, all of the advantage they have on their phone or the cameras or anything else. And we miss it because we're living through it. And this system is eradicating those gains and concentrating the wealth and trying to make prices go up against that. And, and, and the primary thing is, uh, is productivity in a, a digital world should be negative GDP. It should, it, it should drive um, or, uh, and, and, and because information is moving from things to information, or it, from things to information, and it's being digitized, and it's just starting. It's moving across society at blinding speed. That system requires a currency that allows for deflation. Any other any other thing that allows inflation or centralization, which then allows inflation, um, uh, it essentially concentrates power um, and puts all power, eventually all power in the state or very small, uh, very small people, amount of people who determine who get, gets what and it ruins a free market. And, and now, now pull on that thread. Uh, it, that they, so that, that's, uh, it's a requirement of the new system, a, a currency that allows for uh, deflation. Every other system concentrates power. And those are the two. Uh, uh, those are the two ends of the spectrum, and and keeps making it worse and worse. Now, when you have costs that want to go down, take solar for in instance. Um, you have the lowest cost energy now, and uh, if you add batteries, it's not lowest cost energy, but solar itself, lowest cost energy additive to the grid, um, bringing energy co costs down, and 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 all costs are supposed to be coming down. So you have to exponentially increase the amount of printing on one side to keep costs going up. Should oil prices be what they are right now? It's ludicrous. Should, should copper prices be what they are? Should all of these prices, should, you, should gas prices uh, be what they are? No, that is, a, that, that is a function of money printing that's trying to make prices go up because, we've only, because if you allow deflation to happen, this existing system that we live in that inflate where where it's just credit collapses, so so it's it's a system problem, and people are so stuck in the system they can't see it's a system problem. Yeah. Uh, to add to that, I, I would go one step further and say that uh, like even before the information uh, uh, era, everything was information uh, uh, with physical things as well. There's no people are not selling goods but services, every good is a service. Like I, I, I just bought a new sofa for outdoor sofa for my garden. And it, it, it's not really that I want the thing, but I want to be able to relax in my, in my backyard. Uh, and I want somewhere to sit. That's a service and not a good. So, so I would say that this problem existed before, before the internet as well. It just, uh, th this exponential growth of uh, like how cheap everything became uh, just propelled it. Uh, it's it's much easier to see the problem now. Now that it's uh, we're in the 
like <laughs> flipping stage of the exponential curve uh, the, where the prices of everything are approaching zero in, in reality and and still they're artificially going up i mean the the very word money printer shouldn't exist no one should ever have been allowed to to print money money should should always have been a thing that you that was costly to produce the costlier the money is to produce the cheaper the prices of everything else and vice versa the cheaper the money is to produce the the costlier everything else yeah. abundance and money scarcity and everything else or scarcity and money abundance and everything else exactly that's the yeah. choice that's and, and actually, Knut is, is exactly right. Information has always been, it's an organization of atoms and, and it's, a, it's, it's somebody's creativity, idea, creative idea to organize those atoms in your iPhone differently than somebody else. It's just information. Exactly. The, 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 but today, what, what we can do with organizing, what technology is allowing us to do is, is, is moving so fast and it won't be our ideas alone it'll be artificial intelligence ideas giving far more. It's just, it's moving so fast. And so that's that type of system, especially where we are. So to Knud's point, inflation was always a theft, but we didn't notice it because it happened so slowly. Um, and, and now it's happening at a at blinding speed. And, and when people, when people are forced to ask, if you can make up money for, from nothing, that, and, and it's causing all of these prices to go up and some people are winning from that and some people are massively picking having the pockets picked. Is that a fair system? And I, I can't, it, for the life of me, I can't understand why some people still think it's a fair system. In fact, a lot of the people that are most hurt by it want more of it. Yeah. I, and just, I, I'm going to state this. I'm not hurt by it. I, that you guys know because you read my book. Uh, read my book. In fact, um, in fact, I'm helped by it. Um, I just I, I don't think a system deserves to be unfairly ba ba to to me or anybody else. <laughs> oh, exactly right. <laughs> it's it's so it's like people. Money is so. Uh, it's in the base layer of everyone's operating system. It's like a nationality or a religion or something. People think they can't. They they think they can't break out of those mental chains. I mean, you're born and you live and you die, and what you do in between is up to you, really. If you if you if you want to, uh, but but we're we have all these pre-programmed uh, like operating systems and uh, we have a hard time most people have a very hard time thinking out of the uh, uh, outside of the box when it comes to money but since it's so fundamental to everything but uh, we're gonna need to sooner or later everyone's going to to, to need to rethink money and uh, we're just ahead of the curve guys yeah yeah it, it, but it does say how early we are on this yeah um, yeah it's a and you know, I wrote about this quite a bit, connect um, and, and Kevin, the because because I I think about that a lot. Where are, where are my objective mistakes in my thinking? What are the things that? Uh, why do I believe something? And 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 is it because I want to believe that, or is it because it's true? And so, um, and 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 where are others as well? And we go through life and we believe a lot of stuff and it's us holding ourselves back um, yeah, in, in most cases. Um, but that's true. And it's true for me. It's true for you. It's true for everybody. Um, but we think it's not true for us. We think it's true for everyone else. And, uh, and, and so in this, in, in this case, we are very early in this um, because, because and, and even, even when we think about, when money, Bitcoin price go up and everything else, and uh, and and when you when you think about it, it's money is an abstract concept, right? You don't want more money; you want the things that money will buy. So it's applied to every er, everything else. And what what really what we're saying, I think, um, is in Bitcoin, all other prices will come down forever. And we'll be able to buy more for forever, but it, I, I don't want to 
uh, die with billions of dollars and say I would or I had the most money. Like what a ludicrous life, right? The the uh, like it's not something that I really care about at all. Um, I, I care about the time I get to 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 use those experiences with, with. It's it's to create more experiences, create more safety, create more every, everything else. And I think most people, very few people, there are some, be um, chasing money for money's sake, but it's actually not for money's sake. It's so that they can say they have more than somebody else. Yeah. It's, it's, it's used for your experiences. It's used to create more and it's used to create abundance in your life and an abundance of experiences or that's what it should be used for. It's an ab abstract concept when we, but, but to Knut's point there, um, when, when people don't know that and they've been lied to all their lives, about you have to live in a system that looks like this, what they're doing is they're chasing safety protection of their family in an arbitrary unit that's being destroyed in real time against them. And so you can understand all of the, the natural fear, uh, what ends up happening to, uh, to, to people as a result of essentially breaking that, the breaking the, those rules. Mm. Um, Jeff, uh, there's something, you know, that's been occupying my mind and, and I think it's important. I, I have the feeling it's been shunned or ignored or not really, maybe because it's the unknown unknown and I don't want to go into the unknown unknown, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you've, you've expressed, you articulated in some of your interviews, podcasts, uh, you know, your concern, like, um, what's the transition phase going to look like? You know, are we going to have like, you know, social disruptions, more social division, chaos, you know, maybe even civil war. Like, how do you see this? Uh, because one thing is sure, you know, Bitcoin cannot be stopped and network cannot be. So it's going to go up, you know, in whatever purchasing power and, and it will eventually, you know, uh, reach a critical mass. We're going to reach, uh, you know, mass adoption, hyper Bitcoinization. But are you sometimes, you know, more than ever concerned, like how, you know, if, if you if you've maybe seen the, the science sci-fi movie <laughs> in time, you know, with Justin Timberlake, yeah. where they have, yeah. Uh, do you, do you sometimes, are you sometimes concerned that it's going to go like a, a, a you know, two tier or multiple parallel society levels we're going to evolve into in the transitional phase? Um, oh, that's a, it's a big question. It's a great, great question. And we can't, let's, let's explore it a, a little bit. Um, but by the way, and this is uh, to all Bitcoiners, um, it actually does. I think you're right. I think it doesn't matter to them specifically. Um, because if they're longtime holders, th uh, this is going to continue and continue and continue and stop looking at the daily price. But but the more, in, in fact, the more that we try to make others look bad that, who clearly don't see it, um, the more we feed the narrative of the existing system that it, it's it, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of crazies. They're not crazy. The, Bitcoin has the smartest minds. <laughs> in it and, and the entrepreneurs and everything else it's it's not crazy but if you if you're if you're too air if we're arrogant everything else everybody wants to knock down the person who's never arrogant right and so so we need at least for me i think about okay people just don't know they really don't know they're so blind to this and they and they don't know and that gives this system an edge that gives the existing uh, system an edge. And what I really care about, what I care most about is getting as many people as fast as they can on Bitcoin, not the hedge funds, not anything else, individual people. So you have a technology, you have a technology that promises empowerment of the individual on one side. Um, and, um, and the only way to stop that it's, it's very hard to stop, but the, the state is going to do everything and not just one state, but other states, they're going to try everything they can to stop that because it removes the state power and the operating system is different. I am convinced. And I mean, the operating system is so different that it changes how we think about money, our time, everything. It's, it's connected to so many other, other things. So, but the state control this existing system for fear of loss We'll try everything to uh, to stop it. So I understand that violent swing. So when I see things like what Elon 
did or does with Doge or anything else. What my biggest fear is more people aren't being exposed and coming on because they're scared. And, 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 and then it creates more of this two type, two types of systems. Now, now let's take the, this kind of the state system. We've already talked about it. There is actually no way for it to function without consolidating more and more power through inflation. So money printing more and more power and society will vote for the short term rather than long term, right? So the people that are starving will say, yes, I'll take that money, even though, even though it's coming from them in the first place. And, and, and so, so I've thought about this uh, long and hard. Why don't enough people in Russia stand up and demand a change? And, and because it's, it's so easy to try to seek safety in a system that is unfair. And, and, and they'll think personal safety, I won't risk myself to be able to, the power is too great. Now extend that same path forward or Myanmar or anywhere else that you see um, the 4 billion or so people that live in these kind of type of countries. <laughs> um, and why don't they all rise up? Because if they all rose up in an instant, they'd be, it'd be uh, uh, this uh, uh, dictator power would be overturned, but they don't because of that short-term family safety versus the right thing. Now think about that model, which we are moving to in our existing world really fast um, with AI and robotics. Good luck. Good luck. So you want dystopian, have, have very small control of this with that type of superpower. That's pretty dystopian. That is, yeah. by the way, that is the rate, that is the real, uh, um, race of our time. Yeah. Versus Thanks for the transition, by the way, but that's because it's going to be the next question because you brought that up actually last time in one of the interviews uh, about the Boston Dynamics robot. And, and yeah. that's the uh, first topic I think we talked about in our first interview. And you brought it up again. I'm like, you know, what if they're just showing, you know, what they have as it, you know, displaying it as a toy, you know, something cute. And, 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 yeah. and, 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 yeah. Just on that, Kevin, and I want to let Kano uh, talk, but on that, I just use it as a reference point. Because Boston Dynamics, 10 years ago, if you just YouTube it, look what it looked like, look at it now, and imagine, extrapolate what it'll look like in 10 years. But I, when I say that reference point, now people will think the, do the dog or the robot doing flips or the da dancing, and they'll be burned in their mind and they won't extrapolate how much, how fast it's moving, mm -hmm. nor will they extrapolate the miniaturization of those robots. And it might not look nothing like that, that that dog or, or that uh, or that humanoid robot but the power because of the miniaturization or the swarm that you could create on, on this with a, a, ai is like nothing we we'll, we have ever seen skynet <laughs> the t t1000s are coming <laughs> a swarm of them yeah <laughs> uh, anyway to 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 address your your last question first before we get into uh, robotics and ai uh, <laughs> Uh, you talk about the transition, Kevan, and I, I think that's. Uh, I think of it more as as the the crash because it's only a transition because we have Bitcoin. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a transition. It would just be a disaster, uh, and a disaster uh, is coming regardless uh, of whether we have Bitcoin or not. So I think Bitcoin is is the only tool we have for dampening the collateral damage of the coming disaster. And uh, on, on the on the point of like uh, the, the Elon and the doggy coin thing and and all the the misinformation uh, that that is so abundant here in the in the Western world, that could actually help the the people that need Bitcoin the most because like people in Nigeria or Argentina or Venezuela or Myanmar or whatever, uh, they have a chance to 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 hop onto this train before. Like if you take or Lebanon or hyperinflating countries, uh, they have a, a, a. It's much easier for them to understand the benefits of of sound money, so so they have a chance in the global race to hop onto Bitcoin before us <laughs> that are already safe uh, do. 
So that's how, how I view that. But I, and, and then you understand when you think about what um, I, I read a lot on uh, consciousness, brain, uh, brain interfaces, or, or, or everything else. And, and one of the things I've, I've come to think, I wrote a little bit about it in the book, but you can only touch on things about this deep in, um, in, uh, in, in a book. To, so you, you sacrifice narrow depth for broad, uh, broad awareness. And so, so one of the things I've thought about a lot is we don't, uh, we, we don't um, grasp everything that comes into our mind. The amount of, if you actually thought about it in kind of a quantum state, so how, quant how quantum works, a probability wave, and it, it could also be in two states at once and a probability wave that it would be and in, in, is in the ideal state. Well, our brain, I think, actually put, potentially works similarly in that out of all of our possible choices, we can only make one at a time. Like there's a, we're only looking at one thing at a time. And, and most of those things stay in, 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 in a, a subconscious that doesn't actually register. It is, and, and that it doesn't hit our awareness at all. And that could be the, a dog barking right now while we're on this and I don't hear it because I'm talking to you and I'm thinking about this, or it could be a million of other things. We believe we don't do that. We believe we can focus on two or three things at the same time, but that's just a switching back and forth. It's how yep. fast our, our, brain, our brain switch. We can only focus on one thing at the same time. And so if you think about that quantum probability um, and, and, that, and that idea, and there's all of these things and choices in your brain that you actually don't know you're making those choices on. And it has to register. Um, and if you, if you look at brain scans, so it's called a P3 wave, as enough neurons start firing together. And a lot of times a P3 wave won't register across the whole brain and, and essentially come into your consciousness so you can make a decision. But you can still see, have you, have you ever seen that uh, basketball uh, example where they're throwing around and yeah. count the white shirts and a gorilla comes in the middle of yeah, the, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fascinating. And, 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 and so, so it, it's, it's actually a proof point of what I'm saying, right? So people would never see the gorilla because uh, they're counting the white, uh, white shirts and, and when, on rewatching it, they cannot believe they didn't see the gorilla. That's that kind of that P3 wave as it comes into your car, as it co goes over to your, your, your brain, brings it into, uh, into your awareness. So what I think is happening in society in general um, and individually and then and collectively is if you looked at us or a bunch of people at Bitcoin, it's kind of that, that happening and we're aware of it and we became aware of it. And, the path, and that path to understanding Bitcoin, a lot of times, the same thing, people don't understand it right away and it takes them back and forth, back and forth. Back. But once they get it, they can't unsee it. And they no. see it, in, in, and they and they see what we're talking about everywhere. But for people who haven't seen it, and if you imagine their consciousness isn't picking it up at all, it's they're blind to it. So, so the the systems thrashing back and forth, though. Um, the one good thing about the systems thrashing back and forth is the existing system has to keep printing money, which has to bring. Uh, alternate has to bring more people into this awareness and ask a ask these types of questions which should hopefully bring a way wider adoption as you essentially said that global consciousness now not individuals but a global consciousness yeah. starts yeah. to understand what we're talking about yeah it's it, except it's not a gorilla it's uh it's an elephant and it's every in every room at once it's uh, <laughs> right. Sch schrodinger's schrodinger's elephant <laughs> exactly, exactly yeah so uh yeah, yeah exa exactly right i i wouldn't call it the global consciousness i would call it an intersubjective truth or or something like right. that maybe but that's nitpicky i agree with everything you said jeff yeah yeah, and that ties pretty good. Before I forget that question from one, uh, some of your followers, he says uh, one of the questions is why uh, by ESPN, ISBN, why human beings evolved to have conscious states. Uh, do you want to like answer that, Jeff? I don't know. Uh, um, I, 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 I talked about that in uh, Lex's uh, show too. It's not out uh, an out yet. So he asked uh, 
can you program consciousness? And I believe yes. I will. Uh, I, 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 so I, I believe eventually computers will have consciousness. Um, and so what? It, what is consciousness? If we just what we just what we just talked about. I know these are hard things to to cope yeah. with. In a holistic um, sense, do you mean like holistic. with emotions and comprehension? Emotions too, like so. So why not? Is, uh, is uh, so so these states and and. And, and if you go, kind of go back to, the, to, to um, I'm going down the rabbit hole here now, but if something <laughs> can, uh, can you, uh, let, let me to. So some of these stories in our lives told through, through folklore and everything else, but became the right things for us to survive as a species, right? The myths, legends, and everything else before there was written word, before there was computer to error correct. These were stories uh, passed down be good to your neighbor right don't like that so so there's a bias um and 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 actually even one of the biggest stories around um is something we're just the hero's journey which 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 we all drive towards because a hero going up against a system not for their own benefit but for a system to do the right thing no matter what when most people won't, if the hero wins, loses everything else, we want to we want to celebrate that story, right? So, and and we celebrate it through time. So, if you think about a human evolution and, and our brain's ability to cope and everything else, all of these stories, ideas, everything else, essentially to point us to the right way about people who did it before before uh, before us became a foundational path actually to thrive as human beings, because if you didn't, if, if, if you didn't, you would be, you would be quickly killed or excommunicated from the, the, the group. Now, now you add in where technology, technology is taking us and computers and everything else. I, I say, if all of that came from our ability to tell these stories and, and ability to what's right, what's wrong and error correct over this. The error correction came from a different form. Error correction came from these stories over and over and over again. And now that error correction is coming from computers. Don't you think it might be the other way around though? Like that the stories are the way they are. The, the, the fact that the hero's journey story seems to be so popular in, in all cultures might be because behaving in that way uh, uh, helps propel us forward, and uh, and hence the stories are constructed in that way. So it's not actually the story that makes us makes us behave in a certain way, but us behaving in a, a evolutionary like uh, positive way or evolutionary uh, way that helps uh, helps us forward that that makes us construct stories in that way. Well, so 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 I I think like. How does that start that story? Because the the person that's running this hero's journey is going up against a system, right? And 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 then that story is so we want to believe, we want to believe hope, trust, we want to believe the good in people, and and when 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 that's up against a system that is unjust, and that hero wins, actually sometimes even if they lose. <laughs> We celebrate them later later on because it's the because of yeah. that. So I I suspect I'm not sure, but I, I suspect it's because we we measure who we want to be in and and moving kind of society forward that error correction out of paths that people took that moved society forward. We celebrate yeah. our heroes. Yeah, because because the the real life examples of this are are good role models for us. Totally. So, 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 like, so, so, I believe that the the stories come out of real life. It's not like it's a sort of a chicken in the egg the thing going there, but, but uh, they come from somewhere, uh, and uh, you, you can see similar behaviors in in chimpanzees and baboons. By the way, like uh, storytelling and and uh, like worshiping. Uh, uh, other chimpanzees and altars and stuff they they have they have a a mind for 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 telling stories as well and they're they're getting there 
uh, and I, I believe it's strongly connected, as I've written in the books about uh, Dunbar's number. And like we we need a coherent story uh, in order to to form larger groups than Dunbar's number, where you know Dunbar's number is where you know everyone in the group personally. And in order to make a group larger than that, we need a narrative. Uh, that everyone can believe in, so like an intersubjective uh, value system, uh, a, 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 the the idea of an omnipotent omnipotent being is one such idea that can that can be used as a tool uh, for our leaders in order to to uh, to make people follow a, a certain leader in groups larger than a flock of baboons or a flock of chimpanzees. So uh, I, I just need and, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 can I, I and Kevin, you know, I spend a lot of time uh, in podcasts and everything else, and I think we need to spend more um, as a Bitcoin community. Any day, um, man. Yeah, um, in, 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 <laughs> yeah, um, in 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 talking about the hope and the future of the of what it'll look like, mm. rather than where we are now, because because when when people are scared there's a whole bunch of scientific evidence on this they they don't think they go where they race back to safety and and it's a it's an it's a response and their and their ability to think go, uh, go uh, goes down they stand at a corner car speeding down in a car uh, and and it honks or screeches what goes through your brain does it go to do you do you, do you zoom out and see everything or do you zoom in and think of uh, safety. So when people are scared, they zoom in and they get locked deeper. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fear and anxiety in the world today. Yeah. And yeah. That's, going to, that's going to accelerate. That yeah. has to accelerate. And and it, it moves up the geopolitical ladder where we're talking about technology and where technology is going. It's so different from where we've been. The people don't want to face that. They, they, they don't want to face the truth. They want to go back to safety yeah now yeah. you add bitcoin on top of that and you add uh, everything else in a system change on top of it you can understand really well why people why people don't see it because they're so scared to see it they're so scared to examine whether they're it's in their consciousness or not or they or or be, it's not because they're so f scscared to be able to even examine it it's easier to believe the narrative you've always believed yeah, and Jeff, you know, we're being systematically lied to, defraud, and I can observe that around us in the very, you know, vicinity, whether it be friends, family, people are so scared of even facing their own fears. You know, I mean, I don't want, I don't want yeah. to go into psychedelic experiences. I think I'm a proponent of that because it helps you make peace with your own, let's just call them, you know, really rooted fears, demons, and and really, you know, change a perspective. And I think this is what people need, but I don't know what's going to trigger that. So here, here's how we can help. So here's how we can help. One, two, three, and more, more. We, um, we, um, we can start talking way more about what the other side of the path looks like through hope. Uh, through, through. Is that your question? How do we get more? How do we get more people onto Bitcoin as fast as possible? And then, what does that new system? What's it anchored by? And what does it look like? That, that pr provides a path of transition from a system that's failing and will look like this to a system of hope. And 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 it, it's really important because as you could to that point, why religions or anything else, we need a story to believe in. And without that story, without that, uh, that, that story, um, we'll believe the story that's in front of us. Yeah. And, uh... To this, this is so fascinating. Because I believe Bitcoin is the gives us the ability to believe in ourselves, the story of ourselves, and what, to to realize our own dreams. And I think this fear that you're talking about, it, it's it's very tightly connected to why people virtue signal, and why they're so untruthful and uh, and like the image you you signal to others becomes more. Uh, more important to you than what you actually think, because you're scared of uh, you're scared of consequences, and you're scared of uh, thus scared of being of telling the truth. And uh, because telling the truth uh, online 
and risking like saying something wrong and l like we're doing now we're doing this live and we we just say whatever pops into <laughs> our heads and that can have dire consequences if something gets viral and uh we can all have our reputations wrecked if we say something wrong but it's so liberating to uh, to uh, like let your guard down and just this is me this is how clever i am i'm not <laughs> Uh, this is the level I'm on, and uh, I'm I'm going to try my best with it. And uh, I, I, Bitcoin has helped me a lot in 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 like realizing my potential, I, I guess. And like, or that sounded a bit pompous, but but like <laughs> daring, daring to to um, to expose myself like this. And uh, I I think more more people <laughs> should like be less scared and I, I don't think they will be unless unless they they dare to take a, a leap of faith uh, or a, a, a leap of a leap of uh, <laughs> a leap of something else I wouldn't call it faith I would call it a leap of trust in mathematics and praxeology <laughs> <laughs> so um if you guys have uh, 10 more minutes and we can wrap this up, uh, Jeff, I really, really find this conversation highly fascinating. Uh, so can we go back to technology? Um, Jeff, I want to ask you, because, you know, again, you you brought up some examples, you know, in, in our interview and many other interviews, you know, about how advanced, you know, technology, that is already like 10 years old. And, you know, as Eisenhower, you know, warned us of the military industrial complex, and, you know, there's been just probably tens, maybe even more of, uh, of, of trillions of dollars siphoned off into the uh, military industrial technological innovation complex, I would just call it. And I, I refuse to acknowledge that there hasn't been, you know, some really uh, fundamental uh, advancements, innovation in, in whatever technological field, whether it be digital in the general sense or energy the internet, conversion. The internet, internet itself. Internet or, itself, yeah. or, you know, or energy conversion, transportation. I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a total believer and I'm convinced that once we reach that that phase where we transition into a technological advance, where we truly have a free market, we truly have entrepreneurs, you know, genius minds uh, and, and innovators and, and uh, you know, and, the, and maybe even the patent system finally, you know, uh, gets opened up, you know, for civilian use. Um, what is your what are your thoughts on that? I mean, can can we usher into a new civilizational era uh, with uh, with the known unknown, unknown unknown of technologies that we already have, but maybe hasn't been disclosed or not scaled up or not developed or whatever? So, so from the existing system, the world will burn. Uh, and 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 I'm so, so if it lo if this existing system it looks like it, it, then then that then you would have to trust a very small number of people. Probably first what would happen, like if the world didn't burn, burn, you would have something that looked, uh, it, it might be USA uh, and, 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 and Europe against China and Russia or something, um, uh, something like that, both with similar AI powers and everything else going to complete control of their citizens. Um, and, 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 and again, that system, uh, no matter what it looked like before, is untenable, uh, uh, at, 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 least, at least to me. Or you have something that uh, uh, looks like we're, we're talking about on, on the kind of a Bitcoin standard, where you have empowerment of the individual and freedom. freedom. New story, new uh, everything else, but... but the, because this is such a big deal, it's really hard to answer that in uh, two minutes or three minutes and everything else. But I'll give an analog. It's a phase transition. And, and water looks the same until it's ice. And then it doesn't look the same anymore. It act, the properties are completely different. And, and what we're dealing with in our society and everything connected to it is a phase transition. And that phase transition is going under uh, is underway way as technology is supposed to be doing more of the work and getting it more and more efficient. And our time is supposed to be saved as a result. And it's not being saved as a result. We're on a mouse wheel going faster and faster and faster. Uh, 
trying to chase what should be there right in front of us all the time. It should be um, our productive capacity and our innovation is broadening our abundance instead of concentrating uh, wealth and power. That is so, so, but that we're going through that phase transition right now. And, and, and on top of that phase transition, um, assuming you move over to Bitcoin standard, it just keeps them accelerating. And, and what people can't see right now because they're measuring all of their, the, the system from a system. And I, I get it. I really do get it because the system's going to collapse. Winter is coming. The system is going to, or it's going to thrash back and forth. And, and a whole bunch of people are, are, are going to get hurt and they can't see kind of how it would operate totally differently. So you add technology and the growth of technology, the rate of change onto the system we're talking about is what it means. And it, mean, it also means Bitcoin doesn't need to be $3 million because that's a function of, uh, or, or $20 million, that's a function of the fiat mindset. It, it could go down in price and up in purchasing power. And, and what, um, what, what all prices keep falling and they keep falling and they keep falling forever till zero. That's, that's, that's what that, but that phase transition, you can imagine it, I saw it right now, not to you guys, because you're deep into this, but when I wrote my book, I saw it must, who's this crazy person? But it's but if you investigate how fast technology is moving and and uh, and it's just information and more and more things are moving to information and 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 what's happening with energy, you it's a fact. There's nothing going to stop it. It's uh, it's information abundance. Um, and and one more thing, I, you know, I wrote in the book about intelligence as error correction. Yeah. Um, and and that's a big a big thought, but it is it like, that is what the stories did. That is what, <laughs> that is, that's what printing press and then being able to error correct. So every innovation um, and is actually speeding up the information so that more information. And so on one side of it, and then technology is also coming in to error correct faster. So if you use a, a different proxy for this, the printing press, a whole bunch of people wrote books that was were, that were misinformation. And then over time, people corrected that misinformation and the best information won. And today, in, in how we look at the world, we're, bi we're biased, we have a recency bias. We're looking, we, we think we're looking big picture. If you zoom out on, on on what's really happening, we're all looking right now. If you uh, and and that recency bias creates, um, there's way too much information right now. We can't we can't sort it all, and 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 there's so much. How what's the good? What's the bad? At the same time, artificial intelligence is error correcting a bunch of that for us, and and the best ideas are percolating to the top. If you zoom out, and Bitcoin is one of those best ideas. If you zoom zoom out to what's really happening, that's what that's what's happening, and and it's being error corrected um, all, all the time. So both technology enables that information to explode faster because it takes the cost down, and it creates more misinformation, which is error corrected uh, with technology as well, or with uh, faster as well. Fascinating, uh, Knut. Uh, let me let me know what you think. How do how how does this in your mind, in your vision, like going to play out? Yeah, th this ties into my uh, uh, the the J curve rather than the S curve uh, of the price adoption. Like uh, all network technologies have an S shaped adoption. I made a little video about this. You, you saw that came in, I think. But uh, so so the the number of users uh, starts low and then uh, increases exponentially until the entire world is uh, is on uh, the same network like that happened for the tv and for the radio and for the internet and google and facebook and and so on uh but the price of bitcoin uh this thing that jeff is talking about that the error correction gets better and better over time uh and at a uh, at an exponential rate that means that 
the purchasing power of Bitcoin will also follow an exponential curve. And it doesn't end with everyone in the world adopting Bitcoin because there will still be more productivity and more money, uh, like more monetary energy in the network. When you have a global sound money free market, that, that exponentiality gets even even better. Like the, the process, the processes that that uh, that makes the prices go down everywhere will, will will accelerate. So so you 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 will see the price going up faster and faster. <laughs> like for I don't see an end to this, an end point to. Of course, we have finite amounts of resources on the planet, but then again, every good is a service. So we don't really need that many goods. We just need more services, <laughs> and when we will have an abundance in in services so we, we will be able to to like be wherever we want whenever we want and do wherever we want whenever we want and that might be done by like not real life experiences but maybe like virtual reality and augmented reality technology will become so good so that you'll prefer to take a vacation with a vr headset or something like that a futuristic version of it anyway my point is, uh, there's no end to Bitcoin and uh, how how great it can be. Or we're living in the simulation. And this is <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. you hear about <laughs> Did you hear about the concept of a Boltzmann brain? By the way, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pred predecessor to uh, to like the simulation to theory. Nick, Nick, Nick Strum, uh, Strum, yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah, Boltzmann was a fascinating guy. Uh, he has the best tombstone of any scientist. <laughs> did you see this a big? bust with a big beard like this yeah big thermodynamics guy but let, let's not dive into that rabbit hole right now no, but there's <laughs> a yeah but there's a probability <laughs> and i think even il must said that there's a you know uh that the, the chance that we are living in a sim simulated reality is actually high but anyway don't let's not go there into rabbit yeah. hole what I, my last question is um you know we all have children i mean we have my girlfriend and i have a four month baby girl everything changes i mean it's the most beautiful experience to be honest with you i've never uh but your your children a little you know uh essentially older um um do you think that we uh, we should be more cautious in how we in in general how children are grown up uh, uh would it be you know the choice of of homeschooling them or inspiring them with more creative thinking imagination ex exploration questioning you know the, the the reality uh is that something that uh that is more and more important in today's society, especially you know when we are uh, somewhat envisioning a society rooted in Bitcoin. I think I think homeschooling is happening regardless if the parent wants wants it to happen or not, because the the ch the children are connected to the internet, and I, I I'm just seeing my son for instance and how he learned to speak English. He learned to read English first from playing Hearthstone, the, the, the trading card game on the internet, and he and now he's playing Fortnite and he speaks fluent English. He's getting better than me in in like months. <laughs> His month left, and then he's better than me. So, uh, and that that was all from the internet and not from the school. And the the the, the card game taught him to uh, calculus as well in a, in a sense. So so I think like. You're, the the old schooling system is is competing with with something that is so much better at at teaching at least curious kids like uh, kids with a curious mind they they, uh, they adapt fast and they learn fast regardless of what school system they're in so uh, uh, I just see it as a like. I'm forced to have the kids in school, and uh, I guess so, as long as me and the wife has to work, it will it serves a function, and it serves a function of them, like being in a group together with other people that of, that was not of their own choosing, but like there's there's something there, but I think the whole the system on a whole is very very outdated, and that goes for. Pre, from preschool to universities, there's there are so much better things, uh, better ways of of teaching teaching people stuff, skills like because people need skills, uh, and uh, well, I have a lot to say about schools, but go ahead, Jeff. So, so in, in, in this used to be a good way to to learn, 
because information wasn't free. It was hard to access information. Um, and so you created a structure to be able to teach a certain way on, on, on an old system. And primary of that structure was, so on, on the way through, was to get a high paying job, um, to feed back into the system, right? Um, and, and that used to work fine before technology. Now information's free. You could find anything you want. Um, you can error correct it yourself. You can find both sides of arguments. You could go down anything. I can get to any top researcher in the world in a matter of a, a nanosecond um, and they'll take my call So if you're curious and you have accountability, those two things matter a lot. Actually, I, I actually wonder if it's accountability first that drives curiosity. I think it is. Um, and I want, I, I'm, I want to learn more. I want to, okay, where was I wrong? Where did, where did I make a mistake? And I'm, am I willing to, uh, to face it's me? It's not everybody else. <laughs> so, so if I blame everybody else, then I can't get better because there's no reason for me to get better because it's everybody else. If everything is responsible, if I'm accountable, responsible for everything that I control in my life, then it forces me to, even if it is somebody else, to drive what is the learning I can drive to this. And that's so accountability drives uh, curiosity for in search of a better life. And that curiosity today, um, you, could, you can hack it for free. It's completely free. There is no cost. And you could get a way better job or create your own job by that same hack. So it's just where we put our time. Now add, add up the existing system, the 16 years or what, 15 years or 14 years, whatever you're going to do in the existing system versus the time you could place uh, learning in this system. I, I'll tell you, um, I've hired thousands of people. I know who I would pick every time. I always pick the curious, accountable, curious person because they never stop learning. They keep on learning. They're willing to change their view if they if if information comes in that forces it makes them realize I was wrong here. I had a different view, but it's okay. I'm going to change it because now now I understand this, and it takes me now it takes me further. I would all I always hire that person versus the person that spent uh, uh, that many years in school because they, and they think because of a diploma or, or a, a college education, they deserve it. Yeah, and it's so important because these people are so precious, Jeff. You know, I mean, uh, I know from my own experience because I went to, you know, conventional, even Catholic conservative school. And, you know, and then you go to university and then you study whatever law, medicine, whatever. But it, 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 it's entrenched, you know, this, this mindset is so entrenched. You, it's, it's really hard. I can, you know, I can empathize with a lot of people that they can't get out of this box, you know, as you, as you called it uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, Knut. So uh, this is why I'm asking, you know, what, what is it that we, we need to do to, uh, you know, inspire uh, our children, you know, give them like, uh, I'm, I'm sometimes wondering what's life going to look like? How, how are let, they? Let them are they fail. Still gonna, yeah. Let them let them fail. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you if you swoop if you swoop in every time when they, we have a we have an ability to give our kids anything. Um, it's really hard not to give them things and make them and let them fail. It's really hard on us because because you want to say, um, okay, we'll solve that for you. But if we solve the, for that for them, that accountability that I just talked about that. I got to find this answer and it's not the world conspiring against me. It's me conspiring against the world. Um, I have to find that. So, so it's actually, it's more, it's way more in parents than it is in, in, in kids um, to be able to, to, uh, to uh, put that, or, but because as, as kids, and if you think about you growing up and some of the things your parents didn't even say about just who they were, you kind of fall into, okay, that's the way this works, right? And whatever that way that works, you fall into uh, to, to that trap, even if they didn't necessarily say, say, say something. Or even worse, um, a traumatic event or something, you'll misinterpret what it means to you, or you'll inter not, not misinterpret, it means something to you that could mean something totally different to somebody else. 
this your story and you'll build a story around that story and it'll be true for you uh, forever so these 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 things in our own brain get encoded and we don't know how they get encoded they get encoded through emotion or uh, kind of positive really high points and low points of emotion they get encoded and we forget to check were they real did they were they <laughs> were, did, were, were they true or <laughs> is it only our truth I think parents uh, overestimate their impact on their kids, uh, like uh, at least, uh, you know, upbringing wise. Uh, uh, of course, genetics play a huge role here. And uh, some kids are fortunate to, to have uh, uh, to, to have good genetics. But but then again, I think kids learn from their peers and from their from their friends and uh, like whoever they meet online uh, and interact with. And uh, uh, therefore, I think uh, one of the better things you can do as a parent is like move to somewhere where where the kid gets to gets to meet people with a lot of different backgrounds. And like uh, there's some studies that say that bilingual kids are have their brains slight wired slightly differently and and stuff like that. So expose them to to different different types of experiences that uh, I think that is key uh, much more than telling them what to do and uh, what not to do and like <laughs> nag at them all the time. Yeah. And, and there's many other factors like epigenetics, you know, like environmental uh, cues yeah. or, you know, learning processes, experiences, yeah, that changes yeah. the DNA by itself, I think. Yeah, uh, I, I think that there's uh, language plays a, plays a much bigger role than we think. There's, a, there's an island nation somewhere in Micronesia uh, that they always know the the, the uh, directions of east, north, and west and south because uh, they don't have left and right in their language. They only have north, south, east, and west, and they always uh, they have like an inner compass, like like a like a bird. <laughs> uh, so so I, I think how we how our languages work. Like for instance, in in the many Asian languages, there there are no words for for blaming other people. So uh, if if someone destroys a Ming vase <laughs> in China, that you don't really you don't really say oh th this was destroyed by that that or that person, but you said oh there was an accident, uh, and there's no real way to blame a person a specific person on it. And I think that language plays plays a huge role in in how we inter uh, interact, like how our brains get wired over time when we're kids. And this this is also an aspect of, of Bitcoin because you can view uh, money as a language and as a means of communication. And uh, if if the kids get to speak Bitcoin from an early age, so to speak, uh, the the their their minds will be wired in a different way. They will they will see the world in a different light uh, than us fiat minded boomers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it's, um, I would also recommend, you know, uh, people or the, every kid at the appropriate age should should read uh, your books and many other, you know, authors in this space. Uh, the Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future by Jeff Booth. And and yeah, and Knut, Knut I mean, you've written a couple of books, uh, Bitcoin, uh, uh, Sovereignty Through Ma Mathematics and Bitcoin Independence Reimagined. So, yeah, yeah should be mandatory, I think. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you so much again uh, for your time and really it was a fascinating conversation. Any final thoughts or people or anything important I think we left out to share with people, with our listeners? We'll go down another rabbit hole if we do that, Kevin. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm good, but thank you very much for having me on again. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's about time I go official with uh, the fact that I'm going all in on Bitcoin and like I'm doing this full time uh, from now on. I quit my day job. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> Do you have a job for me yet? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I've employed like 450 people. You've employed thousands, but like... <laughs> I might come to you one day and knock on your door or like your virtual door. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Perfect compliment. Yeah. Okay. Guys, okay. Thank you so Up much. the conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, Hopefully we can do this again soon yeah. in the future. Thanks, guys. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Thanks. So how did you like this talk with 
Jeff Booth and Cruz Valhan, you know, as you've um, probably noticed, you know, the more you go into the rabbit hole, the more you have a holistic comprehension and, you know, being able to connect the dots. And this is why, you know, I loved uh, talks with uh, with Jeff Booth and or together, you know, with uh, Cruz Valhan, because, uh, you know, it's it's much more uh, sometimes uh, much more deeper than we can ever ever imagine. You know, we talked about psychology, emotions, the fear of, you know, of the unknown or known unknown, unknown unknown, you know, uh, the fear of even facing your own fear. So a lot of psychology, emotions, you know, preconditioning, programming, indoctrination, dogma plays a lot of roles. So, you know, from the very beginning of our talk, uh, coming back, just, you know, talk about Elon Musk. He knows exactly what he's doing, you know, just, you know, look at their, uh, look at what they're doing, not, not what they're saying. So he still hasn't sold, as far as I know, you know, his Bitcoin. He's actually more accumulating. He's not stupid. But still, at the end of the day, he is a Cantillian insider. He is a parasitic, uh, you know, uh, fiat uh, subsidized uh, entrepreneur that's been uh, profiting from governmental subsidies and military contracts. And I'm sure, you know, he is somehow uh, bound uh, to, uh, you know, national security, whatever military, national security, confidential, confidentiality. So a lot of things I'm sure he knows much more than he pretends to, but he cannot talk about it. There's a lot of things and I've noticed what has changed in his in his way, or how he's, uh, how the narrative changes or how he, you know, describes some problems, whether it be artificial intelligence, what have you. So at the end of the day, you know, he is profiting from this fiat central bank and governmental structures. Uh, and it's, you know, it's parasitic. But uh, just imagine, you know, how much more advanced technologically, scientifically, structurally we could be in a Bitcoin rooted economy, in a deflationary economy, with deflationary technologies, uh, with a free market uh, where, you know, all these ingenious minds can prosper connect with one another with entrepreneurs inventors engineers cap you know real capitalism right so uh, as you know as you've uh, i'm sure you know i, I have to probably re-listen to this in, to this talk uh, several times and, and digest it i'm sure some of you are going to do this too so let me know your thoughts share your thoughts share your uh you know what do you think is going to happen what do you think is going to uh, is this going to play out? What do you think is important for us as humanity, as parents, uh, for our children? How is this going to play out? Because I think it's on a lot of levels that's going to play out. And I think, you know, we need to start with ourselves, with our own fears, with our own emotions, with our own, you know, desires, visions. And, uh, and you know, it's just unimaginable. Like for most people, it's just unimaginable what kind of human civilization, what kind of uh, civilizational evolution we could live through by order of magnitude. You know, this is what we've been talking actually about, you know, exponential technologies and this, this vertical curvature, right? So, uh, yeah, uh, make sure you follow me, uh, you follow uh, Jeff Booth and Knut Salman on Twitter. Uh, read the books, order the books, share it with your friends and families. Again, The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future by Jeff Booth and, uh, of course, uh, by Knut Svalholm. He's, you know, he's a brilliant writer, uh, author of books and articles, whether it be Bitcoin, Independence Reimagine, or Sovereignty Through Mathematics. So if you have any suggestions for any future talks, panel discussions, or special topics, which is really deep in, inside your, your consciousness, your brain, your heart and soul, let me know. My email address is kds.kvandabani.com. You can follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Telegram. Uh, make sure you follow me and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast platforms. My name is Kevin Davani, the host of the Kevin Davani Connection Show. I hope, I really hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Share it with your friends and families and stack sats. Be, stay humble and uh, live, live, live the future, live the evolution because it is, it is manifesting into reality. We just need to understand, to comprehend the bigger picture, connect the dots and manifest the essence uh, and the vision uh, within and beyond Bitcoin. And thank you so much again. I'll see you soon. Bye.